You can see that the cornerback here is supposed to cover this guy, but he doesn't appear to know that right away as he runs away from the receiver before he realizes, oh no, that's my man. And now he's five yards behind for a very easy catch and run one play touchdown. And this play might be the best play against these type of defenses. As you can see, once again, this guy gets lost in the crossing and this cornerback here who probably should be picking that up is dropping down on a different route, letting this guy get wide open for another easy one play touchdown. <laughs> For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no-band guaranteed delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff at the Mad Cheese, as always. Got another breakdown for you guys, another offensive breakdown out of my brand new Tennessee Titans offensive ebook. I'm working on a new Steelers playbook which has some really unique formations as well. So if you guys want to continue to see videos like this, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comments section. Today I'm going to be showing you guys the second offense out of this particular playbook because I already put out a full breakdown of the strong close. So if you guys want to see that, this is one of the better uh, running and passing formations because that's kind of the trend for the Titans since Derrick Henry was you know, the focal point in Madden 24, even though obviously he's not there anymore. But in Madden 24, this was all about strong close, I form close. Uh, you just saw the, the I form slot. A lot of really great running and passing formations. And today's video is going to be no different. I'm going to show you guys a full breakdown of a very common formation that's in a lot of different playbooks out of the deuce close. Now when it comes to my four play audibles for this offense, I want to have at least one inside run, either the halfback zone weak or the halfback wham would be one of the best options. There's really a couple, but those are the best two in my opinion. I find the wham really only goes straight ahead though, where this can be run inside or outside. So I like the halfback zone week better. As far as pass plays, I have the bench, which is a really good dink and dunk concept. The PA cross shot, which is a really good, uh, you know, medium passing concept. And then the PA X post cross, which is a one play touchdown against every defense in the game. And a good dink and dunk play. So I definitely want to have that in my four play audibles as well. My fifth play is always going to be the halfback stretch, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start off with that. Not now, bad. this formation at its core is really a running formation with a lot of really good pass plays, but you can really have a lot of success in both areas. Now, with this wide alignment with these tight ends being where they are, you can really run this stretch pretty much all game and have a lot of success. But if your opponent starts to stretch or spread their defense to the point to take that away, no, you can always switch to the inside zone. And you can see how you got these lanes here. Like, this is a huge lane. If I want to try to take advantage of that, I can do that and get, you know, five yards easy just about every single time if I see that opportunity. So it's really up to you. Here you can see, you know, it looks like we have a cover three. If it is a cover three or even if it's a cover one, you should get runoffs based off of the routes, that the fake routes that the X and B route are running. So it's something where I can just try to get outside just about every single time. But you can see if that guy beats you to the edge there, which cover three does a pretty good job of doing, you can always take it up short. So there's a lot of opportunity here in the run game. Here we'll go ahead and we'll just run that again. Like I said, if you get those blocks as they should, you should be able to just, you know, get a five to ten yard carry average with this formation very easily. And if you make a guy miss, you can get a lot more. So this is something where, you know, like I said, I'm always looking to cut up short. I don't have to take it outside. My real my first run lane's outside, but you can tell if you go to the replay here. You can tell by the block setting up whether you're going to want to take it off short or not. You can see this guy, I think it's Karloftis. He's going to get to the edge to the point where it's like, I, I probably could have continued, but I just didn't like the way I was looking. And you can see how this hole opens up right inside. So you always have that second hole on the stretch or on the other run, the halfback zone weak, which I'll show you guys in a minute. As this run here, I mean, this is an obvious opportunity to the weak side here or whatever. There really is no weak side. That's part of the, the, the appeal to this formation. But you can see it looks like there's an extra defender on the other side. So, of course, I'm going to want to flip this and go the other way. And you can see how the blocking just sets up, although I probably should have slowed down a little bit for A.J. Brown. But you can see it's, you can get a very healthy average with this run combo. Now, when it comes to the zone weak, which like I said, I'm going to keep that in my audibles as well. This is a play, too, where it's, it's pretty much the same read, just in reverse. I could go for this hole, or I could try to bounce it outside to go to the outside once again. So they're very similar in the way that they can really uh, operate together. Now, there is another really good run play in the halfback wham. I'll go and I'll pick that. This play's going to work if there's a gap wrap the middle, but if you have any look like this, as I just picked random, it should do a pretty good job of sealing that edge, as we have our biggest uh, run play of the video, but it's mostly because of the formation that we were in if you see huge run lanes like this you should get this look uh, but you can see this wham block especially if you have a guy like dallas goddard there who's probably one of the best blocking titans in the game you're going to get very good runs up the middle so since this i mean i almost think that it might be better to go this route and you can flip this with the right stick too at least i thought you could maybe you can just i guess you have to flip the entire play to do that but you can see there's a bigger lane on the other side and that's why i'm going to flip the play and try to get him to, to basically do that exact same look as you can see right there he just you know you need bigger gaps than that for this play to be successful but i would say this might be a better option 
for your second audible play because I showed you guys how similar the halfback zone week and the halfback uh, stretch can be used. So this might be a better play, and that's something I'll probably experiment with. But even though I like these type of formations because they're easy to run, I'm really more of a passing player. So I'm going to show you guys a lot of really good dink and dunk pass plays that work with this, starting with the corner stops, because this is really just a one uh, type of play. This really only works against man coverage. So we're going to start off with that. For this play here, these outside routes, um, I'm not really sure what type of route they're running, but they'll get open against man coverage every single time as long as you throw it properly with timing. So practice this. And against any man coverage, really, uh, they'll they'll sit down right in front of the defender, and the defender really won't do nothing. But like I said, if you throw it too early, too late, might be a slightly different story. But the only thing that really stops these routes is playing underneath. If your opponent gets wise to it and hits wide triangle and then down the right stick, they will stop that. But at the same time, you can outsmart them by motioning out one of these receivers and putting them on a streak. So if they play underneath, they're going to get beat for a one-play touchdown. Now, the second best dink and dunk concept is probably going to be the bench. You have another play, though, in the PA boot slide, which is very similar. Uh, it has a little bit of a different route concept. So we'll go and we'll pick that first. The bench concept is a good concept, uh, first man or zone. But this one here is very similar where you have the corner route, and you, but you also have this crossing route, which is what the X receiver is running. So I really have my options here. I like to put the uh, the tight end on a streak, especially if I want a hash mark like I am here, as it will help to pull uh, the coverage back and get this guy open to the sideline, which is something I do quite a bit in the bench as well. But the reason I like this play is because you also have the crossing route, which is going to be a very good man beater. So I have something for both, as you can see here. I mean, that's really, you know, you have multiple levels, multiple concepts uh, that can get open on this route. On the right side, it's really more of a uh, zone beating concept with the tight end and the corner route, while on the other side, it's more of a man beating concept with the X receiver. I also think it's probably better to put this guy on a drag because now I got two man beating routes just in case my opponent picks up on the X receiver uh, because that's probably going to be their number one read or the number one key aside from the corner route, which is something that they'll probably pick up on if you run this play too much. But I'd rather have this Y receiver underneath on a drag, just in case. You can see right there, I actually made a pretty big, pretty poor read because I didn't see that guy uh, sitting on it. But you can see how that has that can help to have another guy there. Now, the bench is pretty similar, so I'm going to go ahead and pick that. We'll continue to go random. For the bench concept, I mean, this is a pretty good play as is. Um, you should have success with manner zones. You can see right there, the, the, the five yard out's going to get open. The receiver uh, over the top looked like he was going to get separation. As you can see, I mean, for zone coverages, the, the five-yard out route doesn't, you know, they don't typically play out far enough. They don't typically go to the edge far enough. I'd like to make a motion. You can motion across this tight end. That's pretty much the only thing you can do. And you can put him on a streak. Then you can put the Y receiver on a flat. And now you have a little bit of a uh, flood concept here. As you can see, I could take that flat. I like flat routes in these looks as I find they're very quick. Uh, plays that can get open pretty fast. Next up, we got one of my favorite plays in the PA deep cross. This is one of my favorite route concepts. We're going to pick that. Then on defense, we're going to go random. For this play here, all you got to do is put the X route in the streak. That's going to be your clear out route for zones. And then put the A tight end on a five yard in because I really want that route to be, um, you know, the route that uh, your user's really going to take the bait because I'm typically going for this. I'm typically going for this guy here or the running back. The five yard in. And I can put him on a smart route to try to make the user think that he's a little bit more of a, of a threat. But realistically, I don't find that that's, um, you know, I don't want him pulling back that far. I want him to be shallow as possible because I really want to suck the user down so that I can get this B route open. You can get this B route open at an even deeper depth. You can create even more separation between those two routes by putting the B route on a smart route. And I find that this is really the best. Although, obviously, if you get like a man zero like this, I got to get that ball out pretty quick. But you can see how big of a play this can be. I mean, that's, that's almost a 50-yard bomb right there. So a 40-plus yard play with a play like this. I'm not sure what I got here, but anytime I run this play, I find it's best to smart route it because you want that separation. That's about a 25-yard uh, separation between the short routes or the short routes that I'm hoping that my opponent follows as we get another man coverage there, and I just kind of force it to the check. I mean, even that guy, he just got, you know, 25 yards. So it's, this is a very explosive play, especially against man coverage. Um, but this is, you know, it's best to the B receiver, obviously. But that doesn't mean you're supposed to always be waiting for that. If the B, if one of these shorter routes are open, I would just take it because you can get big check or catch and runs with that as well. And you can see how explosive of a play the, the deeper route could be. As you can flip the field just like that on a play like this very easily. So those are the, all the explosive passing plays. The most explosive, though, is going to be the PA X post cross. We're going to pick that. I'll continue with random to start. 
The reason I'm choosing random is because you can do something similar here by putting the A tight end on a drag, and it will give you three levels once again where I can throw, you know, for man coverage, the best route is going to be the B receiver. As you can see right here, we get a one-play touchdown against what was probably cover one man, as that's a very explosive route that will actually be a one-play touchdown against a couple different defenses. So you definitely have that. And this is just a really good dink and dunk play once again. You get good pass pro. Is I get another man coverage? That looks like a man. That looks like a cover too. And if I would have waited, I might have been able to get a one play touchdown against that with the exact same route once again. But let's go and let's do some specific one play touchdown plays from this play. We're going to pick that once again. We're going to start off with cover zero this time. Against cover zero, just put your two tight ends on check and release routes. And the B or the X receiver can really both get across the field for one play touchdowns as long as you get a good catch and run. That's all you really need to do here as this is going to be, um, you know, a very easy play because nobody really runs cover zero anymore because of how easy it is to beat. Go ahead and I'll do this one more time. Like I said, this is just a very easy concept. If your opponent guesses pass, though, you can see a lot of times these guys might get in um, to really make a play. But it's a very easy play to score against this defense. On this play, you can see because of the tight alignment that both of these crossing routes get inside leverage very easily and can be both gone for an easy one play touchdown. But that's not the only route as the receiver on the other side will get open fast enough for an easy catch and one play touchdown as well. And that really can work against any man cover. So we're gonna go and pick cover one hole. Against cover one, I'm gonna put the Y tight end on a streak to pull back the safety and run it from a hash mark to the short side like I am here. And you can see how this can create a lot of space for an easy one play touchdown to the crossing post route. And this is because these receivers are close enough to the point where you'll see that they'll get in each other's ways once again as the tight end completely sets a pick and allows this receiver to get wide open across the free safety over the middle for another easy one play touchdown. You won't always get that look though, but it doesn't really matter as the X receiver should get open inside anyway because he has inside leverage. I also find that putting him on a smart route can help, but we're gonna focus on the B receiver now. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna block the running back, and I'm gonna put the A tight end on a five yard in to try to help the pull coverage away from that yellow middle zone. You can see how once again, the streak and the post route can all get this guy open for a very big play to say the least. That has potential to be a one play touchdown. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do that one more time because I think I actually threw that ball a little bit early. And if I'm really trying to get that B receiver open, you don't wanna put the Y receiver on a streak because I don't wanna pull that safety back. I want the post route to pull that guy now. As you can see, he's gonna run with that guy to the point where I have a better opportunity. But once again, I threw it a little bit too early. So we're gonna do it one more time. I can put the A tight end on a streak to try to pull back that safety in that direction even more. And you can see how now that safety is completely selling out into that area. And we have another opportunity for a catch on one play touchdown. Well, we'll do that one more time. This time we're going to choose cover two man before we move on to zone coverages. Kind of the same setup really, uh, putting the Y receiver on a streak. And you can see how the B receiver once again can cross and be a very big play. For a one play touch, I'm just gonna run it from the other hash mark, put the Y receiver on a streak, and then put the B receiver on a 10 yard out route. If I really wanna split those safeties, I can motion them out, which is something I'm gonna be doing quite a bit. I told you guys to do that during the run plays, and I'm also gonna be doing that during these pass plays a lot. Uh, and that's gonna be something that your opponent shouldn't necessarily pick up on. And you'll see how you get that inside leverage once again, allowing this guy to get across the formation very easily and get a very easy one play touchdown split in safeties. Go ahead and watch the replay. You can see how that 10 yard out route gets the attention of the other safety. And when I cut across here, the streak's going to hold that other safety to pull him back, allowing this guy a huge throwing lane to get open for a very easy catch and run one play touchdown against his defense. Next up, we'll do cover two zone. For this coverage, just put the wide receiver on a streak one more time and do the exact same setup where you put this guy on a 10-yard out route. It's up to you if you want to uh, motion him out or not. As you can see, I get plenty of separation otherwise, and it saves me a step to the setup but it also is less of a tell. So it's really up to you, but cover two zone is a very easy defense that I don't want to touch down against. Next up, we got cover three. Cover three is one of the hardest, but for this particular play, it's actually very easy, which is one of the reasons I like this setup. So let's go and let's pick cover three sky. For cover three and cover one, you gotta be on a hash mark like I am here to the short side. Motion this guy out and put him on a comeback. Now with the A tight end, I could block him or I could put him on a five yard end, give myself a check down. The running back's already gonna be a pretty good check down though. But the X receiver just gets wide open once he crosses the safety because the safety has to respect that streaking tight end. Cover three is one of the hardest defenses to score one play touchdown against, but this one here gets so wide open as the streaking tight end pulls back or at least demands the respect of the safety in the middle of the field. And you can see he immediately turns his back to his receiver, leaving him wide open to space. As all I have to do is bullet and pass lead away, and there's no cornerback here to be found at all. Now, this also works really good against things like cover four. Let's go and let's pick cover quarters. Against this defense, you really don't need any adjustments as the X route will do a pretty good job of getting past 
um, you know, the, the coverage. Just cover four doesn't cover post routes very well. But I can make that even easier if I put the Y receiver on a streak. And now the cornerback is going to have to cover the X receiver, even though he really didn't seem to know that right away. As you can see, I just get much more separation there. So if we watch the replay, you can see that the cornerback here is supposed to cover this guy, but he doesn't appear to know that right away as he runs away from the receiver before he realizes, oh no, that's my man. And now he's five yards behind for a very easy catch and run one play touchdown. The B receiver can also have success, especially if you put both tight ends on streaks. As you can see here, he gets completely lost in coverage as well, as this is another play where both receivers can score very easy one-play touchdowns against his defense. And this is one of the themes of this video, as both of these receivers once again can score one-play touchdowns against this defense as well, as this guy just gets completely lost in coverage to the point where another guy is picking him up 5 to 10 yards behind him for another easy catch and run one-play touchdown. This play also has a lot of success against defenses I don't normally show, like cover 6, which is a matching coverage concept as well. Let's go and let's pick that. Cover 6 is going to be the same way. Put these guys on streaks, and you're going to see how, number one, the X receiver gets wide open, the B receiver is going to get wide open once again, as this is just a very glitchy concept against these type of defenses no, then we'll do that one more time like i said just to see that b receiver because he's going to have success as well as you can see that cornerback there was about to drop down on the underneath route to the running back for what reason i don't know and this play might be the best play against these type of defenses as you can see once again this guy gets lost in the crossing and this cornerback here who probably should be picking that up is dropping down on a different route letting this guy get wide open for another easy one play touchdown as that tight end is streaking down the center of the field uncovered as well as you're glitching out one of the most popular used defenses in the game right now but last but not least we also have cover four cover four regular which is probably one of the hardest defenses that won't play touchdown against as well in the game along with cover three so we'll go ahead and pick cover four drop this is another play we're going to run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field motion out this b receiver and put him on a comeback then put both tight ends on streaks and they're going to pull back the safeties Although, you want to try to cancel that play action a little bit early. As you can see, I had to throw the ball early there because of the uh, the running back. If he takes you too far away out of the pocket, it's going to mess everything up. So, you can cancel. I mean, you can take it away completely. You don't have to even use it. You can pass block that running back. But I'm going to leave it because that's probably my best check down. I just have to cancel it to the point where he doesn't carry me out of the pocket because then the pass rush is going to be better. As you can see right here, we had the one-play touchdown. But for some reason, you'll see that from time to time, too, on this play where these tight ends will where the crossing receiver will run into one of the tight ends for some reason he runs into the a route from time to time to fix that just put him on a smart route change the the depth now he's running a bit of a shorter route so i'll smart route that forgot to cancel that play action once again so i'm gonna have to correct that in the pocket but you can see how that streak's pulling back that safety to the point where you have a wide open one play touchdown opportunity from about 50 yards out and this is another very difficult defense that I won't play touchdown against, but you can see how easily this play does it as he breaks the route early and these streaks pull every zone back except for this cornerback who's still covering the, the uh, comeback route. And we have another easy one play touchdown as long as we bullet and pass lead to the sideline for a very easy score from 50 yards out. So I'm going to end the video there. I showed you guys a one play touchdown against every single defense with this play. It is one of the better plays in the game and also a very strong running concept to use. So if you guys want to see more videos like this, as always, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, leave me know in the comments section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.